Hello to the RC people who are interested in Skymaster F5E conversions to EDF or just large EDF people in general. Uh, I am going to cover this build uh, occasionally at least. I can't get to the filming and all that stuff a lot, but uh, I'm not, not a huge YouTuber type, but this was a unique enough build that I thought it deserved to be covered to some extent. Um, I, why convert it to EDF? I, I really enjoy um, EDF jets. I like the sound better than turbines. Um, I like not having to mess around with turbine maintenance or fuel or anything like that. Plus, I really don't have a good spot to fly turbines around this area. So even though this jet is eight feet long and has smallish intakes, um, a lot of people would say this would not be a good EDF candidate, but um, I say poo-poo to them. I think it's going to actually work out really well. It's actually, uh, this model's from 2004. Uh, it was probably laid up in 2003, so it's over 20 years old. Never saw the sky. It was, uh, it was purchased and construction began on it, or assembly began, and the original builder had trouble with it. So with some of the alignments of the elevator, and I, I found the areas where you know they ran into a struggle, and I can get why someone would just get discouraged and move on to other jets. Um, but I, I enjoy doing these kind of uh, restorations or a survivor build, whatever you want to call it. And I've just, I've been kind of bummed out lately. There's not a lot going on in EDF large jets anymore. Uh, there's a few new models you can buy out there, foam models and things that are decent sized. But the community around large EDF jets has just sort of slowed down. It wasn't, back in like 2010, there was a lot more going on of people converting these turbine aircraft to EDF. And I don't know if it was just the short fly times got people discouraged or just turbines started to get more popular. It's probably a little bit of both. So for people who have access to places to fly turbines. That's awesome. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe this thing will end up being a turbine someday. But I still am kind of in love with EDF, and uh, I really like the challenge to me. The, it's a massive challenge to, to convert a turbine jet to EDF, especially one like this, and be successful. There's a ton of planning that goes into it, just picking the components, um, a lot of work to keep the weight down, remove weight, and uh and i just enjoy that stuff i enjoy the design work of it so um so that's why we're doing this it's a eight foot long 50 foot sorry 50 foot 50 inch wingspan um f5 which is it's actually the wings are a little larger than scale skymaster oversized them about two inches per wing which was probably a smart idea back in the day when this plane was this jet was built the turbines didn't have as much performance they were probably concerned about making a true scale wing for it, um, but it, it looks pretty good. The wings are just slightly oversized. Um, I would someday like to build some scale wings for it. Uh, I could save a lot of weight. I think the wings are a little a little on the heavy side, uh, but anyway, so these are these are nice composite wings. Uh, they seem to be built pretty pretty well. Uh, the build and the fuselage overall, it's it's from what I've heard people say about early Skymaster kits. So this is one of those. It is. Um, it has character. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of, um, kind of spotty epoxy work that's gone on in here. And also a lot of the, there's, there's really no straight bulkheads in the whole thing. You know, everything's at some weird angle, but the fact is it does all work. Um, wings plug in nicely. Uh, the dihedral angle is wrong. Uh, that's, that's something I'll need to correct at some point. And I've noticed that on Skymaster F5 one eight scales I've seen in person is they have anhedral in the wing which is not scale and looks terrible to me. So I will definitely be breaking these channel wing mounts loose at some point. Luckily they're, they're not glued in. They just got one bead of this Skymaster epoxy, which turns out to sort of be like hardened toothpaste. Um, so it'll be pretty easy to break those loose and I'll have to jig up the fuselage and get the wings realigned and get the proper no hedral angle. That's what I'm calling it. It's not anhedral. It's not dihedral. It's, it's no hedral. So they should be right at zero degrees. Um, and then I need to do some realignment work and new bushings for the elevators, which I'm working on. I've sourced in those parts now. And then of course the fan mounting, which is going to go back here. I've mocked up the fuselage and all the components and batteries and the balance works out with the fan going as far back as it possibly can. And that sort of makes sense as the turbine, pipes that came out of it 
nearly weigh as much as the, the fan and motor combined. So it makes sense that the, the fan needs to go back there. The batteries are going to end up probably underneath the, can the cockpit in the, the back under the canopy, which is perfect for me. It's easy to get the batteries in and out there. Um, and the fan, speaking of that, Jet Fan 120 Pro. Um, I made some custom tabs for it because I don't like the little ones that it comes with. But it's a nice, lightweight, really powerful fan. And here's the motor, which is 800, 800 size HET, uh, 68450 kV. And that's probably where people are going to be like, why do you have a 450 kV motor? And the reason is because I am not going to be running 12S or 14S or 16S, but I will be running 18S on this jet. Um, with using this Flyer model 200 amp uh, 4 to 22 S ESC. So um, I've seen these ESCs used and read the, read the discussions on them. They seem to be holding up pretty well these days. They, this is the newest version. And, uh, and then you're going to be saying, why 18 S? And to me, one of the big problems we're facing with large EDF conversions and large EDFs in general is a lack of voltage. So we're trying to get by with just doing 12 or 14 S and the, the reality is to get six or 7,000 watts of power that these jets need, the amps are going to be up in the 150 amp range. So the problem with that is it drags the batteries down, you get voltage sag, you get a lot of heat. So to me, the, the best way to fix that is you up the voltage. So the higher you can get the voltage, the better, just like they do in power transmission in general. It's just sort of a known thing when you've got high wattage levels, you got to get the voltage up. So, um, so yes, so I'm going 18S. I'll be running three 5,000 packs to three 7,000 packs, depending on the flight time needed and how wide I want the jet to come out. And on that should give, be about the same weight as a 12S 8,000 setup. Should be more flight time, more wattage, and only pulling about 80 amps. So 6,000 watts on only 80 amps, that's pretty awesome. That means the batteries are not being stressed. Those 6S 5,000s aren't going to know the difference between this model and a 80 millimeter foamy so it should be a good setup on paper um, of course I'll need to do a lot of testing on that um, and also the ducting has to be addressed the inlets are obviously small it's an f5 um, from what I've looked at from drawings and pictures Skymaster actually kind of undersized the inlets on this model as well so I am going to be redoing the inlet I've, you can see I've pedaled this inlet over here a little bit where I can stretch that out and I'll be um, fitting that for a larger intake, of course, reglassing this and finishing this off. But um, I've got the start of these new intakes. I'm 3D printing the plugs over here for. I've got a couple more parts on the printer and those are going to take the inlet area from about 80% FSA to up around 110% FSA. So that way we can get a nice smooth taper from 110 FSA all the way back to 100 as it reaches the fan. And from everything I read on duct, deep ducted white papers from NASA smart people, way smarter than me, is that you need to have that taper starting off at a larger area at the start and a consistent smooth taper all the way back to the fan, which should cut the losses in the ducting quite a bit. So we're gonna play around with all that and test it on this build. Um, I'm also going to be playing around with a couple different bifurcated exhaust setups. You can see the two I have here. I've got what I call my uh, Boy Scout shorts or dad shorts on the left and my skinny shorts on the right. So this is a simple bifurcated exhaust like you'd see from ducted fan models in the 80s. Uh, it's basically you have your exit diameter of the fan and then you have your two outlets that match the proper fan swept area of, in diameter. And then there's just a connection in between with no real thought for area and all of that. What, and this is in contrast to this one where I've designed in CAD and this fan shroud has an exact 5% taper from the inlet, the exhaust area of the fan to the exhaust area of the bifurcation. And the, in one inch sections along here, this does not increase in area. It's a smooth taper in area from inlet to outlet. So there should be improved efficiency based off of what smart people say online. Um, and we all know everything online is true. So we'll see what happens. We're going to put these two together and test them against each other on a thrust stand and see if this one is worth all the time I spent to make this 
really fancy bifurcated exhaust that, like I said, someone, some smart person at some government agency said that style would work better, but we'll find out. Um, other than that, I really just need to get going on building all the framework for the fan mounting so I can finalize all the ducting sizes and get the ducting design in CAD and get those printed so I can make all those plugs and start laying that stuff up. Meanwhile, I can mount work on the fan. Um, I want to work on the nose, getting the, uh, the electric gear mounted for the nose. And I don't know if I said it already, but the low, pro low profile 635 Robarts, they've got an electric conversion. I'll cover that later. There's just going to be a JP Hobby um, ER 120 or 150 in the nose to keep it light. And hopefully with the balance of this thing and where the gear are, there won't be too much nose weight on it, so I can get away with a little lighter nose gear. I've got a nice smooth runway, so I have no excuses to be smashing landing gear for this thing. Um, so that's pretty much it. We've got, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping this will maybe inspire some other people to do some turbine conversions. Um, I hope it might help inspire switching to higher voltages so we're not stuck with 12 and 14S like we've everyone's been doing for the last 20 years. I feel like the future is kind of with high voltage from 18 to 22S. Um, 18 volt, I like 18S because you can just use three of the 6S packs we all have. We've all got a bunch of 6S, 6,000s or 8,000s sitting around. You just use three of those instead of having to go and find, buy a different size pack like a 4S or a 2S to make up some weird voltage. I like to keep everything 6S. All my planes are either 6S or 12S. It's just easy that way. I use the same packs in all the planes. I don't have like special packs for one plane and for another. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to cover that real quick. One eighth or one sixth scale Skymaster F5E. And uh, I will try to make another video as soon as possible uh, recovering the installation of the EDF, um, the fan and motor and all of that and uh, then get on to the final assembly. Um, another little, just real quick, I'll just pan around the shop to see what I've got. These are future, of course, builds. I've Stuff I've had sitting around for years, but stuff I still need to build. I've got a nice BVM electric kit. Uh, the wings are already built on it. I really just need to get that thing done. I've got my trusty Pilatus PC-21. That thing flies awesome. I've got to actually dust this off tonight. I'm gonna take it out this Sunday and fly it at Orange County Modelers Association. Uh, it's got a bunch of other stuff here. I've got my yellow aircraft F-16 that I need to build as well. That'll be an awesome flying EDF conversion. Um, got my Black Horse MiG-29. Again, just too many projects. There's my my Sabre. I'm sorry, it's not a Sabre. It's a Fury. Um, that's my Jet Hanger Hobbies Fury that I uh, bought off of Chris. And that was partially built. And I needed to finish out the build on that. And um, actually it was, it was built and flown. I just kind of ended up gutting it and installing a whole new fan system. It's got an 80 millimeter 12S setup. It flew awesome for five flights. Then unfortunately it, it met its end with a aileron flutter. That's, I guess I shouldn't say the end. I want to bring it back. Uh, I'm going to need to re-glass parts of this wing and obviously lots of cosmetic work and structural work that needs to go on inside the fuselage because it got smacked up pretty good. It pancaked, luckily. It, it's, it's amazing that there's anything left after the flutter incidents, but um, other than that, just a hodgepodge of stuff I've got that needs to be all flown. But uh, that's, I'm sure, the story of many hangers. Lots of, lots more planes than we have time for. But anyway, so I'm making time for this one now. Um, thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about F5E Skymaster 1-6 scale conversions, please put them down in the comments below. Uh, I'm not sure if, if anyone else is building these. As far as I know, this is the only EDF conversion of this model that's been done. I've, not, I've seen EDF conversions of the smaller Feibau and Skymaster F5s, but never the larger 6 scale. So hopefully it works out well. All right. I'll uh, get to work on that EDF and I'll soon shoot another video of that EDF install. All right, take care and we'll see you later.